So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Exciting day, iOS 14 has been announced. Unfortunately, it's for developers as of now, but the public beta should arrive sometime in July. Now iOS 14 will be available for pretty much every iPhone that was running iOS 13. This one is coming in at 3.26 gigabytes and as of now you really can't see the features without going to the developer site to read them about them but i'm sure many of you already watched the video or the wwdc live stream let's go ahead download and this, install this and i will be back we're doing this on the iphone 10s max if you were wondering okay guys so we're now in the ios 14 developer beta one so we go over to software update and you will see ios 14 is now installed and taking a look at the software version you could see it's ios 14 18 a 5301 v now this software did take about 40 minutes to download so don't expect this one to download super quick let's take a first look at the widgets in ios 14 you can see these are a lot different than before a lot larger more legible i would say and and of course you can just kind of grab one of these widgets right here and bring it over to the home screen something you couldn't do before now you can actually have bigger widgets not a lot of people are gonna say android's had this forever that might be true but at least it's here now for your iphone if you want more you're just gonna go ahead hit edit home screen here you see that plus up in the left icon you can go ahead and add more things within here like how about batteries for example we'll add the battery widget right there and you could see more information on any home screen at a glance now one thing they talked about too as well in ios 14 is how you know you can have so many applications and kind of not know where they're at so you just seen what just swiped over we have app library now which will definitely put all your apps in a clean folder over here and you can kind of find everything really easily so you got productivity entertainment reference and reading and it's smart enough to know what to categorize these apps as. So this is gonna be pretty neat for those of you who just don't know where certain things are on your device. So I do like this here for iOS 14. So let's take a look at the, just the way you would see all these app pages as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the jiggle mode here. We'll go to edit home screen and we'll tap these dots at the bottom. You kind of see where everything is at. That's pretty nice. And you can also go ahead and kind of make one of them the main page. So we'll go ahead and hit done there and you'll see that's what we're gonna be working on there. So we'll hit okay. And then now all of our apps will just go in the app library. So if we don't want multiple pages, we could just have one that we like and then just kind of hide the other ones. We'll go to edit home screen and we'll tap the dots down here and we could bring them back as well if we do want more apps on our home screen. I think this is gonna be great for people who like to keep their phone very minimal. Expanding a little bit more on widgets, there, there's just a lot of them that are gonna be available here for you, but there's one in particular you might wanna know about and that's the smart stack. Cause the smart stack is a widget you can place on the home screen and kind of see essentially things that you would most often look at throughout the day, like the news or you know what's going on in your calendar or messages, stuff like that. That's where the smart stack is really gonna come into play for you here with iOS. 14 so we'll go ahead and get this off of the home screen for now but the smart stacks is a great new feature now considering we're already looking at the weather widget here uh, let's go inside and see the differences here so there's more of a minute by minute forecast you can kind of see when the drizzle is going to start it's actually going to rain here today so that works perfect for this example but you can see right here it'll show a little bit more of the air quality it's just a slightly updated but more in-depth weather application here on iOS 14. So another new thing with iOS is calls. So let's say you're reading a news article, for example, in Apple News, and somebody does want to call you, usually that call would just kind of get in your way and just mess up the entire phone, but that's not gonna be the case anymore. Check this one out right here. You're gonna kind of see what happens with the call. So you can see there's a call coming in at the top of the screen and I could just choose to answer that or end it and it's not really getting in the way too much. So that's a nice new feature with iOS 14. Another quick mention in the app library I forgot to talk about is that you can go ahead and search A through Z all your applications right here as well. And then you can kind of tap inside of these as well. So it's probably gonna be pretty neat either way, but you can still swipe down and get to universal search like you're used to. And now within iOS 14, there is picture in picture mode. So if you do are watching videos and stuff like that, you can just kind of play just kind of like you would on the iPad. Hopefully we'll see support coming soon to like the YouTube app and stuff like that. So we can see videos that we probably more wanna see than just things like this. Apple TV, for example, but picture in pictures here for iOS 14. The Siri in iOS 14 does get a more compact layout and you can have a silent mode as well for Siri. So let's go ahead 
and hold down, you can kind of see that she does show a little compact mode right there. Now that could be especially useful if you are in the browser, for example, reading an article and you wanna just say, take a note of something, but you don't wanna lose that place you're in. You can see Siri is a little bit less obtrusive and in your way, whereas before it would take up the whole screen. Within iMessage, there are a few new features, including pinned conversations, inline replies, as well as mentions where like if somebody's talking within a conversation, their name will highlight when you're trying to talk to that person. It's gonna be very useful in groups, very good during these coronavirus times where we're gonna definitely need to, you know, do a little more group chat and stuff on that on our phones. So definitely good there. Now we also do have a lot of improvements to Memojis in terms of how you could kind of like, you know, tweak them and customize them. So for example, if we go over here and then we go to the Memoji and I wanna edit it out, for example, let me edit it. We can go over here to headwear and you can see there's now a, a mask here within uh, the Memoji. So just a lot more styling you can do to your face as well as just making it look more realistic and more like your personality here with Memoji. So lots of updates here to the iMessage. We'll cover this more in depth as it does get more feature packed as the betas do go along. Within Apple Maps, there are gonna be quite a few new updates here and they come in the way of EV routing, cycling directions, as also, the, and also there's gonna be more guides for like when you're traveling places. So right now though, the cycling directions are only gonna be available in certain cities. As time goes on, it will expand, as well as the guys are gonna be working on that throughout the beta, so you'll see more things popping up. But the maps is looking promising. I can't wait to see how this improves going forward. Here is Apple's new Translate application right here for iOS 14. This has been a long time coming, and now you have the ability to translate even offline with this application. And not all language, of course, are gonna be supported. You can also share audio recordings as well, but not all languages are gonna be supported right away, but still there's plenty of them to get you going. But this is nice that we're just gonna have a built-in translation app, very useful. We don't have to go download a third-party application to do this. Now, it's not like we couldn't already do this with certain apps, but still it's nice that we have our own built-in translation app for the iPhone here. You are a nice audience. Let's go ahead and type that. And you can see it'll just translate like that. It also does work in landscape mode as well, as you can see right there, pretty nice. We'll cover this more when the official iOS 14 launches later this year. I mentioned that CarPlay will be getting updates to the wallpapers if you're using the Apple CarPlay, as well as car keys come into certain cars starting soon, but that's more for the future. More cars should be able to be able to unlock it from your iPhone, but that's gonna be some time. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wallpapers that come with iOS 14 right here. You kind of see a preview of your wallpaper right there. Go to the wallpapers, you can see there's three new of them, uh, new ones up there. And if we scroll down, we got pretty similar ones to iOS 13, but these are of course are dynamic. They will switch with the dark mode and stuff like that. Typically the wallpaper section is an area where we see a lot of bugs. Guys, so when we're using an application in the App Store, Apple in the future is going to be requiring more you know, privacy information as you scroll down, you'll see it. It's gonna show like you know exactly what they're collecting from you in data. I'm not seeing it in all the applications Right now, I'm sure developers gotta update this for it to work, and we'll probably see it in the later versions, but the privacy section is gonna be a lot more bold and in your face uh, going forward with 14, and it'll also ask you to allow applications to work or not. It's also gonna ask you, like, are you gonna allow all these permissions? That's definitely gonna happen on this 14. Okay, guys, so sleep tracking in iOS 14 is gonna be amazing uh, for the iPhone and the Apple Watch combined. I don't have no data right now, but it will be definitely something you wanna look into, especially if you do have the Apple Watch because you're gonna be able to use sleep mode, wind down and set up your own sleep schedules and really kinda of let those two devices work in sync to really nail down and get your sleep right. So in 14, thumbs up, sleep tracking comes, comes to the Apple Watch in a better way than ever before and it will combine with your iPhone for a much better and more in-depth experience with sleep here. So. Keep this in mind, this is gonna be crucial uh, to good health, especially if you do like to track your sleep. I mean, I've always loved to do this and I'm, and I'm very excited to see how this goes with the new Apple Watch. So major improvements here in 14. So if you guys use AirPods, automatic switching between you know different devices is gonna be very easy on 14. It's automatically gonna detect the AirPods on this phone and you switch to the Mac, it'll automatically detect them there as well as the iPad. So. Just the experience with using the AirPods with your iPhone is gonna be 
much better here for iOS 14. Okay, so for 14, the camera is supposed to be faster to take photos, that's pretty nice. And also if we go in the video, I'm noticing that the iPhone 10s Max, even the older phones seem like they're going to be getting updates to allow you to switch between video modes here. That's pretty nice. And another thing you'll notice in the camera app is that little indicator at the top does indicate that you're recording using the mic or the camera. Pretty nice little feature. You could see it up there at the top, this little green dot right here. will let you know that you are recording or using the microphone on your iPhone, just a neat little touch to kind of indicate that to you. And in terms of location services, you are gonna have the ability to share your location definitely in a little bit of a different way. So you'll be able to have an approximate location on iOS 14, which will allow you to get more specific, closer data like better weather, for example. And also you'll have this little feature right here in iOS 14 tracking where you can allow apps to request to track on here. So location and privacy, of course, every time a new iOS comes out, Apple does step it up when it comes to the privacy. That's one of the ways they're doing it here in 14. And when it comes to Apple HomeKit, especially if you use the automation features, you're going to love 14 because 14 will allow you to kind of just automate everything a lot more simple. You could see they got face detection as well with smart cameras that work with your phone, you know, home cameras, stuff like that, security cameras, uh, doorbell cameras, and you have smart color as well. So the lights can automatically adjust to the time of the day. So if you need a warmer color, this is automatically gonna know. Yeah, Apple Home is getting a lot better here. You can add different accessories very easily here. If you care a lot about automation, home automation and stuff like that, you got to get this update. Not right now, not this current one. You can wait till the fall, but I'm just saying this year is going to be a good year if you're using a lot of home automation tools. And we covered so much, but there's more. Like the mail application, you could set third-party applications like Gmail in the future that's going to be able to, you know, just be your default email. So you don't have to use the Apple Mail as default email. That's going to be pretty nice as well. And so that's a quick look at iOS 14 for the iPhone 10s Max here, developer beta one, definitely a lot of major tweaks to organizing your home screens in 14. A lot of things happening with Siri here, the new translate app. There's a lot of overhaul here. Maps is going to get better, especially for cyclists. I mean, there is a ton coming to iOS 14, as you've seen in this video. Let me know your favorite feature with 14 down below if you're downloading it or not, and let me know if you encounter any bugs that will help out the community as they can see, oh, oh, too many bugs. But for now, it feels pretty smooth, at least for a developer beta one. I'm shocked, there's really not a lot of lag right now at all. The phone is getting pretty darn hot though, so I'm gonna have to wrap the video up here. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick Carroll helping you to master your technology. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to be well, stay safe, and peace.